What is up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And I am so excited. I am so excited today. I am bringing to you another guest. And today, my guest is Dr. Alex Avery. His channel is right there. It's called Our Pets Health. So, Dr. Alex Avery, he's actually a vet. And I, I met him, I came across his channel, and I absolutely love what he's doing. So I will provide links to his channel at the end. But anyways, I was talking to him and we were trying to figure out a way that we could collaborate. And he came up with this topic about imposter syndrome. And he'll dive a little bit more about that into a second. But when he came up with it, he talked to me, I'm like, yes, absolutely. Like, this is something that I know that when my depression kicks in, it's something that I've struggled with in my career, working at a drug and alcohol rehab, even making these YouTube videos. And some of you out there who struggle with depression, you might be able to relate to this. And Dr. Alice has some great tips for how he gets out of this imposter syndrome funk. So I'll quit rambling now and I will pass it along to Dr. Alex Avery. Hi, so I'm Dr. Alex and I have a YouTube channel here called Our Pets Health, where my aim is to help pet owners and their cats and dogs to live a healthier, happier life. And I'd really like to thank Chris for inviting me onto The Rewired Soul to talk to you guys today about something called imposter syndrome. But before we get into that, I need to tell you a little bit about my background and why I want to talk about that to you today. So I graduated as a vet from university in 2006 um, and initially kind of went out very confident, very comfortable to be trying new things, to be getting stuck in and just taking all of the opportunities that came along to me. When you're a new graduate, you start off every decision that you make, every surgical procedure that you do, it's the first time that you've done these things without supervision. And so you quickly can become quite comfortable with just trying new things. The problem can come is as you learn more and as you get more experience, you potentially become more aware of where the gaps in your knowledge are. So I think it's something we're all guilty of when we're really young is, you know, you think you know everything, um, but as you age, you start to realize, well, you know, there's a lot about this that I don't know, or, you know, I thought I had this understood, but, you know, now the more that I read into it, the more that I find out about it, actually, rather than getting answers, I'm throwing up more questions. And for me, this led to certainly a case of imposter syndrome, although at the time, um, you know, when this first started, it's not something that I was, you know, aware was a syndrome or, or what it was. So what is imposter syndrome? Well, it's a condition where people are they're unable to kind of internalize their success and they feel kind of a fraud. They feel like maybe they're conning people into thinking they're more successful than they are. And there's, I wouldn't say a constant fear of being find out, found out, although that may be the case for some people, but there's a fear of being found out and, you know, the, the real you being exposed, if you like. So you might have achieved a lot of success. You might have really clear things that have been achieved and that you've done and that you're responsible for. You might have delivered amazing results on a project. You might have helped a client unbelievably. Um, you know, in my case, you might have obviously saved an animal's life, but what can happen is that you pass off that success as maybe as luck. You know, this time I was lucky, phew, thank goodness. Or, or you pass it off as actually, you know, other people maybe contributed much more than me. And so, you know, they're the real, the real, should be the real benefactors of, of any praise and any, um, any evidence of success was down to them rather than yourself. And so this imposter syndrome, it can take a lot of different forms. So, um, you might end up just overworking, just putting in the hour after hour after hour, just really over achieving, being an absolute perfectionist, just because of the sheer fear of, of being found out and you know being called an imposter. You might undermine your own achievements, you know, oh, that was nothing, or you know, anyone could have done it. You might not recognize the achievements for what they actually are. You might recognize it as an achievement, but you might think, you know, it actually wasn't too much anyone could have done it. Or you might recognize it as an achievement and always be crediting other people in the team rather than taking that praise yourself. And behind this, to a greater or lesser degree, there may be just a constant fear of failure that, you know, if something goes wrong, then that's when everyone will, will realize, you know, just what you are and just what you're capable of or what you're not capable of. So, you know, it's clear from this that imposter syndrome, it can 
develop you can develop anxiety um, you can develop stress and you can it can lead to depression so it's something that is you know is potentially very serious and can lead to a further degradation in mental health so you know I'm not sure I've experienced all of those things personally um, and you know I've only got my own experience to gauge um, how badly it has affected me I'd certainly say it's something that I, it never kind of crippled me. Um, I do remember kind of starting jobs though and being absolutely petrified. And I think a lot of that was due to questioning my own ability, even though I had a very clear experience base behind me. With the realization that there was something like this going on has led me to several different strategies to, to try and mitigate this effect um, and to try and, I wouldn't say eliminate it because it's potentially, well, well, I wouldn't say it's always in the back of my mind, but it's something that, you know, that I'm aware could come back. Um, and so a few of the strategies that I used to help myself was um, I always keep letters that clients have given me um, and it's always good to read back of those to, to remind yourself you know what you have done remind yourself what your achievements are you know keeping letters grateful letters from clients um, it's really good at, at boosting kind of self-confidence and just reminding yourselves of you know sometimes there are only small successes but reminding yourself of the difference that that I've made to pets lives and to their owners lives I did go through a stage of reviewing cases quite a long time after kind of I'd seen the patient just to see you know what had happened had they had to come back had something major happened that needed remedying after I'd maybe seen them and dismissed them and that again gives or gave me a great confidence that you know no the vast majority of my patients they're improving or they're developing as I would expect them to and so there's nothing to be found out about if you like um, communicating with colleagues is a big one so mental health in the veterinary profession it's a really big issue at the moment so I think for a long time it used to be maybe ignored it was a bit of a taboo subject um, and I guess in a lot of areas mental health is a taboo subject but um, something you might not be aware of is the veterinary profession has a suicide rate of four times higher than the general population um, it's higher than doctors it's higher than dentists you know so mental health is a real issue burnout is a real a real concern and a real threat to a lot of vets um, and compassion fatigue there's lots of you know there's lots of different issues and I think the profession as a whole has become much better at addressing addressing these issues and putting in place it, uh, different strategies and different initiatives to try and help improve the mental health of a profession as a whole so having that discussion kind of going on around you um, even if you're not directly participating in it I think it helps make you more aware of your own mental health and and so something else that I've tried to do is kind of from looking into this and from coming coming across imposter syndrome it's helped kind of put a name to a condition um, and it's helped me be aware that actually you know this is something that is actually quite normal so up to 70 percent of the population will at one time suffer from this so the chances are it's something that if you don't suffer from it or haven't that you may very well in the future so just being aware myself that has made a big difference so knowing that these feelings can be explained maybe accepting them accepting that they're there and then helping me kind of dismiss them from my thoughts and I think as I've grown older and been in the job longer just accepting as well that that no one can be perfect that you know mistakes will happen we're only human and I think being kind to yourself and forgiving yourself and then going back to your past successes can just help get over those feelings of being a fraud or the fear of being found out okay so big thanks to Chris for inviting me on to the rewired soul um, you know it's been a really interesting opportunity for me to take not something that I would normally talk about on my channel um, obviously if you have a pet if you have a dog or a cat um, and you want to learn about how to help them have a healthier happier life and optimize their health then join me on my channel our pets health but until next time take care all right, so first and foremost, thank you so much, Dr. Alice, for coming over and doing such an awesome video. Like, when we were talking about collaborating and like he sent me this video idea, I'm like, dude, why didn't I think about that? Because this this is such a, a real topic. Like, for example, like I mentioned, when I work in my drug and alcohol rehab, like some of you have heard about relapse rates and things like that. And 
this is when it really starts to eat me up. And I'm like, am I even good at my job? Am I even helping these people? Why am I doing this? When I'm making these videos on YouTube, I'm like, am I even making a difference? Do people even care about their mental health? Am I giving them good advice? Am I giving them good tips and things like that? But what I loved about what Dr. Alex did, he gave some solutions. And these are very, very good solutions. Like when you guys leave comments, right? Like it's like what Dr. Alex said, your guys' comments and giving me feedback and saying, hey, this helped me out or I can relate to that. Thank you so much. Like that helps me get out of that imposter syndrome, right? Same thing when my clients send me emails um, or call me or tell me how, the, how well they're doing. That helps me out a ton. But, you know, some of you out there, you might be able to relate to this at your job. Or even parents out there, I know a lot of parents out there, we get that kind of imposter syndrome and like, am I even really good at this thing? What am I doing? And all this other stuff. So make sure that you take some of those tips that Dr. Alex gave us, all right? But anyways, 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 please go make sure if you are a pet owner or you just like pets, right? Like go check out Dr. Alex's channel, Our Pets Health. I stumbled across his channel and I'm like, dude, why do you not have like a million subscribers? Like the guy is very smart. He's great at what he does. He has some great topics. I own my uh, a little cat named Maya. So I check out his videos. They're very helpful. And make sure you stay tuned because he's going to do another video very soon that I think all you pet out owners out there is, are going to enjoy. All right. But if you're somebody who struggles with imposter syndrome, make sure you leave a comment down below. I want to kind of hear what your experience is about it. And yeah, let's have a conversation, okay? But anyways, as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here, make sure you click that little round subscribe button. I'm always making videos to help you out with your mental health. And right there, there is a link to Dr. Alex's channel, Our Pets Health. Make sure you go over there, hit that subscribe button, check out all of his awesome videos, okay? But as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.